Today we're diving into the myth of narcissists and how it connects us to the modern concept of narcissism. So what can this ancient story tell us about ourselves and our relationships? Let's find out. But before we get into it, let me introduce myself. I'm Jennifer Hachia, and on this channel, we explore the complexities of psychology and manipulation in both relationships and professional settings. And then we discuss it in the comments below. So if that feels interesting to you, hit that subscribe button. And if you're a regular watcher already, hello there. Now let's dive in. The story of Narcissus is a fascinating blend between mythology and human nature, with intriguing facts woven into its origins. Narcissus was a figure in Greek mythology, renowned for his extraordinary beauty. According to the myth, he was a hunter with unbelievable levels of attractiveness, who caught the eye of many, including the nymph Echo. Echo fell deeply in love with him, but Narcissus consumed by his own vanity, rejected her and all others who admired him. So Nemesis, the goddess of retribution, took notice of Narcissus' arrogance and decided to teach him a lesson. She lured him into a pool where he saw his own reflection for the first time. Remember, there weren't mirrors back then. Captivated by his own image, Narcissus became infatuated with himself. Unable to leave the allure of his reflection, he eventually wasted away and died. In his place grew a beautiful flower, which took his name, Narcissus. So now for the fun part. And you know how much I love fun facts. Number one, etymology of Narcissus. The name Narcissus is believed to be derived from the Greek word narki, which means numbness or torpor. This reflects the idea that Narcissus was metaphorically numbed by his own reflection, leading to his tragic end. Number two, the Narcissus flower. The flower that emerged from Narcissus' death is commonly known as daffodil. However, its technical name is Narcissus. In the language of flowers, daffodils are often associated with new beginnings and rebirth, adding the layer of irony to the story as Narcissus' own story is one of self-destruction. Number three, the psychological term. The term narcissism in psychology, which describes an excessive preoccupation with oneself and one's own needs, originates from this myth. It highlights how the myth of Narcissus has influenced modern language and the understanding of self-love and vanity. Number four, Echo's role. Echo, the nymph that fell in love with Narcissus, was punished by Hera and could only repeat the last words spoken to her. This story of unrequited love and her role as a reflection of Narcissus adds a layer of tragic complexity to the myth. And then we have number five, art and literature. The myth of Narcissus has been a popular subject in art and literature for centuries. Notable representations include works by Renaissance painter Caravaggio, who depicted Narcissus gazing at his own reflection, and the poet William Shakespeare, who alludes to the myth in his plays. Then, finally, number six, symbolism in culture. The story of Narcissus has been used to symbolize various themes such as self-destructive vanity, the nature of love, and the consequence of self-obsession. It also highlights how one's excessive self-love can lead to one's downfall, making it a timeless cautionary tip. Overall, the myth of Narcissus continues to resonate because it explores the themes of self-love, vanity, and the consequences of excessive self-focus, all of which are deeply relevant to human nature. So why does this ancient myth matter today? Narcissus' story has given us the term narcissism, which describes excessive self-love and self-centeredness. This concept has real-world implications in every sector of our life. And yes, it can apply to us. In our personal lives, excessive focus on ourselves can limit us and block us from creating genuine connections with other people. In professional settings, narcissistic traits can impact team dynamics and workplace relationships and environment. So here are some lessons that we can take away from the myth. 
the difference between self-awareness and self-obsession. The downfall of narcissists did not come from his self-love, but it came from his inability to see beyond his own reflection. Recognizing the fine line between self-love and self-obsession is crucial for healthy relationships. The next lesson is that empathy truly matters. So balancing self-regard with empathy and consideration for others can help us foster better interactions and relationships throughout our lives. And finally, identifying narcissistic traits. Being aware of narcissistic behaviors in ourselves and others can help us navigate relationships more effectively. So what's next? In this video, we explored how an ancient myth continues to influence our understanding of narcissism. So stay tuned to learn more about managing narcissistic traits and fostering balanced relationships. Now I would love to hear from you and your thoughts on the myth of narcissists and narcissism in general. So drop your comments below and let's discuss how this myth can reflect in real life behaviors. Have you ever met someone self-centered? How do you think it affected your relationship dynamics? Remember, I am open to different perspectives, so let's have a conversation as long as we keep it respectful. So if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see another one, you can check it out right here. It will be linked right here above my head somewhere. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you on the next video. Bye.